And this is part of the second strategy of building a supportive, nurturing culture. How do you support your employees, support your team? It begins by asking them, how can I support you? Rather than make an assumption that the way I support you is the way I support everyone on the team. You, you know, one of the most powerful yet most forgotten nation the world is? Let me say it again. Do you understand what the most powerful nation, but also the most forgotten nation is in the world? You know what that is? Welcome to Metagagement, the HR show that dives deep into the heart of employee engagement and workplace culture. Your hosts, Anne Scotland and Dr. Lyman Montgomery, bring you a groundbreaking show that explores innovative strategies and insights to transform and elevate your organization's HR practices. Dr. Montgomery is an employee engagement expert and best-selling author, while Anne Scotland is an acclaimed business consultant and podcaster. Together, they will unpack the complexities of modern HR challenges and reveal innovative solutions that can be immediately applied to your workplace. Please welcome Anne Scotland and Dr. Lyman Montgomery. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Metagagement HR, a show we created specifically for the HR community uh, to give you a lot of neuroscience-based approaches that will help you innovate and help you foster reliance and adaptability. And we find that that is really the key to what we say, going meta, uh, using a meta mindset to do your job more easily uh, and get better results. I'm Ann Scotland, and my co-host is here, Dr. Lyman Montgomery. Hi, Lyman. Hey, how are you doing? So glad to be with you. Yay, I am too. And I'm so excited about our topic today, which is part three of our series called How to Cure Disengagement and Burnout at Work. Uh, we talked a lot about burnout and uh, last time. So I guess the word for today, the problem we're working on solving is disengagement. And one of the ways that we can do that, as we know, is foster a positive work environment. But we're going to go a little bit deeper, Lyman. Yes, a lot deeper. You know, it's, it's not enough just to have in your mission statement that we value our employees, that we are family, that we are team one, there's no I in team, you know, all those nice little cliches. What we want to do today is go deeper. And how do you really do it? You know, how do you create a positive and a non-toxic work environment that people get excited about showing up at work? As a good friend of mine would say, not only show up, but show up ready to outperform yesterday. I love that so much. Show up ready to outperform yesterday. And if you are energized to do that, it means that you feel really good about what you accomplished yesterday. Yeah. That's the whole difference uh, between negative incentive, negative uh, motivation, and positive motivation, right? Absolutely. If you are winning, you're going to want to keep winning. And a lot of times, um, you know, in HR and in other parts of our businesses, we forget that the employees need to feel like they're winning on a regular basis, not always being beaten down and told how they didn't do the deadline or they didn't get enough done. That is so important. That is super important. A lot of times I think HR, uh, those with HR responsibility, we forget that. We can become so inundated in the work that we really don't see the forest because the trees, and one friend of mine said a tree limb is poking us in the eye. And so all we're focused on is the problems that's right in front of us and we forget all the other things that's going around, all the good work. I asked this question a couple of weeks ago at a conference, a bunch of HR professionals. I said, how many of you know the names of your top performers? No hands went up. I said, how many of you know the names of all the troublemakers? Every hand went up. Again, we're focused so much on the problem that we forget about the ones that show up, do their job, earn their pay, go home, don't create any type of drama. We don't, we don't even know their names. 
gosh, that is just such such an element of being human. And this, you know, the whole obsession with the negative because it rises to the surface and and yes. everyone feels like it needs to be suppressed as opposed to creating a liberating environment where people can work and have pleasure in their jobs. Yes. And that's why I know we're gonna get into solutions, but that's why it's very important to recognize those achievements. But I put a caveat in there. It's not enough just to recognize the achievement when it's done, but imagine what would happen in if we set milestones and we recognize for each milestone that was achieved along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, that is so important. And um, I was just talking to someone I worked with the other day about having milestones and steps more, more designated, more broken mm -hmm. down. So that you get the satisfaction of, um, you know, I'm not a checkmark based person, but checking it off. And it just feels good because it's not like the checkoff is, is the highest unattainable end game. It's no, wow, you know, made all, made these calls to these people. Wow. Set up an appointment with these people. Um, just knowing that you're doing exactly what needs to be new next and being organized and helping your employees stay organized is a big, a big part of that. But as you were saying, recognizing and rewarding their achievements, that's something that we often see. And I think that can be done with mixed results. Um, that's typically how corporate does honor their employees. And I think they absolutely should. Um, there are cases where employees are a little embarrassed by that or they don't enjoy being in the spot. Mm -hmm. So let's not forget to do those formal awards. But how can we more regularly acknowledge and reward our employees' work and accomplishments? Yeah. To be honest with you, I think we should take majority of all the rec the annual boring rubber chicken dinner, stale salad, rewards and achievement annual banquet retreats and get rid of them because they do not work. The same people get recognized all the time. The people that, especially if it's a committee, everybody knows the team is going to get acknowledged. But the workers very seldom are they mentioned. It might be, we want to thank John and his team, Susan and her team. So my name is no longer Lyman. I'm just team. <laughs> no, and I, I can relate to that. I mean, yeah. his, his personal example was um, uh, when I was married the first time uh, to someone who was fairly well known in the community. And, uh, but I was still um, finishing graduate school. I was very young and nobody knew my name. They only knew that, was, oh, that's so-and-so's <laughs> wife. Yeah. It's like, it was always yeah. just like, really? You know, I mean, I'm smart, intelligent, friendly. That's all I get, you know, and that's, that's, that's people's <laughs> habit, right? People don't mean to overtly leave you out, but just having someone recognize you and remember your name, as we all know, is uh, tremendously meaningful. Yeah, and finding out how they want to be recognized. You you said something earlier that's so true. You know, uh, some people you can recognize publicly, they love it. Others, you do that to them, they will shut down, they will feel embarrassed, they need to go into treatment, okay? Uh, be, because they're not built that way. They don't want public recognition. Mm -hmm. But what might work for them is having a conversation, a note or something that says, I really appreciate you staying, you know, uh, over to make sure that this aspect, it meant so much to me. Thank you. And that might brighten up their day. They may go home and say, wow, you know what? I really feel like I'm at a, on a team that honors me. And mm -hmm. so you talked about that cookie cutter. And that's mm -hmm. the problem with a lot of, especially large organizations. We have bought into this lie. One size does fit all. One way of doing things, doing things work for everyone. And the truth of the matter, it takes the individual out of the equation. Mm -hmm. It does. And I love what you just said there about, you know, um, sending, you know, letting them know in a personal way, uh, you know, sending them a note. Uh, to just acknowledge them as opposed to, you know, giving them a big award in front of hundreds of people. 
Um, I think there's so much to be gained from the old fashioned concept of a thank you note in the 21st century, whether that's an email Being or a written. check. <laughs> or it's even better. Written. Let me just tell you a story about that. So I've been going through a bunch of my parents' old boxes. I've been sorting stuff for them and I've come across a lot of family letters and so on and so forth. And um, from them, from other people to them, other relatives. And I just was reminded how significant that is, especially because it's often a way for someone to not just, you know, say what's going on in their life, but to articulate their appreciation and support for the person they're writing to. And yeah. it motivated me last week to sit down and write a letter uh, typed. I did type it because my handwriting is abysmal, <laughs> but I did type a two page letter and printed typed and printed a letter to my brother. He has been so helpful to our family in this huge uh, transition time that we've been in with my parents and other extended family members this year. And I really told him, and he's a professional guy. I really told him how much his leadership helped. And yeah. he's a quiet leader. You know, he doesn't really love the spotlight. And, uh, and I said, I'm going to mail it because I've been going through all of these files, <laughs> you know, like where they're all originally mailed letters. We just do the old fashioned thing. So I mailed it. And he got back from a trip he had just been on in Europe. He came home, he opened it, and he said he almost oh, got wow. tears in his eyes. And he, he thanked me so much. He's like, you have no idea. He said, I will treasure this for the rest of my life. And it took me like yeah. 10 or 15 minutes to, to, to just quick type that out. But the mere fact that you, yes, typed it out because you wanted it to be legible so you could read mm -hmm. it, but you mailed it. You didn't just hit send, okay? Yeah. And this is part of the second strategy of building a supportive, nurturing culture. How do you support your employees, support your team? It begins by asking them, how can I support you? Rather than make an assumption that the way I support you is the way I support everyone on the team. Mm -hmm. No. Inclusivity, including them. We are a team. Everyone has a voice. Yeah, I think that's so important. They should. Everyone should have a voice. And in our positions, we should understand what voice they choose to use. Oh, that's powerful. And, and oh, recognize powerful. that. Yeah, uh, we could go into that. We could have a whole separate episode just on that and bring in neuroscience and everything else. Uh, but you are here with us on Metagagement HR, talking about taking your company, your team's meta, and uh, going to the next level, making things easier um, by just working smarter and uh, more instinctively. We're going to be right back. We have to take a quick commercial break. And when we do, we're going to talk a little bit about how to promote inclusivity as part of this challenge to foster a positive work environment. We'll see you back here in a minute. Are you feeling overwhelmed in your HR role? Discover Metagagement, the forward-thinking solution that goes beyond traditional methods. Our personalized coaching services provide tailored support to help you enhance your professional and personal development. With our focused Meta Mindset system, you'll sustain motivation and achieve your goals. Experience the transformative power of our engaging events and webinars. Connect, learn, and grow with industry leaders and motivated individuals. Metagage your organization today. Visit metagagement.com and start your journey. Welcome back to part two, or the second half, rather, of Metagagement HR. Today, we've been talking specifically today about fostering a positive work environment. Um, this is part of our four-part series, How to Cure Disengagement and Burnout at Work. And um, if you have been with us so far, and please like and subscribe, uh, copy and paste this link and send it to someone you like who would enjoy it. We would love to uh, bring them into the conversation, and you as well shoot us an email or a message on this platform that you are watching or listening to today. We'd love to hear your questions and answer them, hear your comments as well. So one of the things, uh, Dr. Montgomery, that we know really can help foster a positive work environment is promoting inclusivity. Let's talk about that yeah. for a minute. That is so powerful. You know, before the break, you talk about giving a voice. Mm -hmm. And part of that inclusivity is when you include not just different people, but different ideas, 
even opposing ideas has mm -hmm. its place in the workplace. When I put together a team, I'm always looking for who's the most critical person I want on the team. Who's a contrarian? I want them on my team. They're like, why? Nobody can stand John. Why you want John on your team? He's a troublemaker. Because John will tell me the truth. John. And I then I give John a job. I say, John, I understand that you will speak your mind. You are a no holds barred type of individual. Is that correct? You're right. That's me. I'll tell it like it is. I want you to do me a favor, John. When you tell me something that's wrong, Give me two recommendations to fix it. Oh, okay. Why? Because now that shifts him from just being critical to now saying, okay, I'm going to criticize. What's the alternative? And I think oh, that's I part that so of much. what we miss. I do. I love that. I love that so much. And, and every time you mention that, I always just, I just get so excited because that's such a clear example of, going meta, doing things in an easier way to achieve a greater result. Instead yes. of just the only way to deal with resistance is to create more <laughs> resistance and push back for whatever right. that- Or to isolate, eliminate, is. and not even, you know, well, we're not going to deal with John. We know he's a contrarian. We know he's critical. So, you know, we're not even going to listen to him. No, invite him. Because he doesn't expect to be included. He doesn't expect <laughs> for someone to ask his advice or his opinion. So turning the tables like that is um, a key factor in, in neuroscience and in many, many other techniques that we could talk about at another time uh, in, in helping shift that energy. And, and also, I think for the non-troublemakers that we mentioned a little earlier in this episode, <laughs> for the quiet people... Promoting mm -hmm. inclusivity in a way that allows them to contribute without making them uncomfortable. Yeah, so it's not it it's not just about diversity when we're talking here about inclusivity. It's specifically making each person feel like they are valued and their opinion and matters and is valued. So how do you ask them again? Um, do you do you shoot them an email? Do you leave them a note? Um, do you have a, a really quiet one-on-one -on -one conversation in the hall or, uh, you know, at the cafeteria? Where can you just gently encourage them to open up? Say, basically, I see you. I hear you. You've been doing great work. Um, tell us what could we be doing to make your job even more effective? Yeah. Nobody expects to hear that. No, they don't. They don't. And it's such an easy opportunity and often so missed, again, because we get stuck in this, in this repetitive checklist environment, doing all the right things. We stop being human. You know, we were each born with a, <coughs> excuse me, a certain level of, of recognition and intelligence about working with other people. Mm, 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 we learned this powerful. as children, how to get our parents' attention. Yes. Well, there's two ways <laughs> or three, you know, obviously you can be loud and boisterous until you get, force them to give you negative attention. You can overperform, work yourself to exhaustion, force the straight A's uh, and be, you know, unhealthy and resentful, but still get their attention. Mm -hmm. Or you can be um, included in the, the family conversation. You can be asked what you think would be a great solution to this family challenge or whatever. We start to learn at an early age, actually, that we can be um, strategic in how we communicate with people. Now, yeah. as kids, sometimes we take that to the level of manipulation, but that's practice of <laughs> learning how to be adults that can be clear and strategic. Yeah. You know, how can you get the end result you desire but for us, how can you choose the most positive way to get there that's win-win for everybody? Yeah. You, you know, one of the most powerful yet most forgotten nation in the world is, let me say it again. Do you understand what the most powerful nation, but also the most forgotten nation is in the world? You know what that is? Our imagination. <laughs> oh, I love that it's one. Very powerful. But when we get a certain age, what happens? We forget. We stop imagining. 
Because what you're talking about, we're all of a sudden we're told, all right, stop doing all that fantasy stuff. Time to grow up. Time to be an adult. What I'm saying is part of that inclusivity and also goes into growth and providing opportunities to grow. What if we said, you know what? We're going to provide opportunities to reimagine what the workforce looks like. Giving people that quiet time. I'll visit one company and they actually have what's called an imagination room where any employee at any time, they have a bright idea. They can go into a room. It had like smart boards and everything, and they can just basically imagine to make things better completely uninterrupted. Hey, I got an idea. I'm going over to the imagination room. Imagine if you set aside 10% of your workday just for imagination, coming up with new ideas, new strategies, maybe a different way of communicating. The greatest nation in the world, but the most forgotten nation is our imagination. Ooh, wow, the bells are ringing for you. Someone didn't <laughs> silence their stuff. Um, and and I love that so much because imagination, again, when we talk about psychology, if we talk about neuroscience, um, imagination is such a valuable positive in fostering yeah. that positive work environment. Um, it's the ability to get creative and have fun when it's not like everything is at stake, like you have, That's you can have powerful. meetings for strategy, but when you can just have fun. And a lot of these times, these are high level challenges or company wide challenges that everyone could get involved in because it's not st specifically limited to their job role, it, but it's something that they can be involved in and, and, and can contribute to. Well, we only have just a few minutes left. So um, let's go on to um, your next favorite thought for the day, Lyman. So we've talked about rewarding and recognizing achievements in unusual and new and authentic personal ways, building a supportive culture. I love this last point we just talked about, which is promoting inclusivity, which is finding healthy, comfortable ways to let everyone's voice be heard. And uh, and encourage that that open dialogue as a regular part of the work environment. What is one other thing we can do to really yeah. work towards and, and, that? And process? these these three I'm going to lump together, and that is physical and mental well being mm. mm. in the workplace, providing an opportunity for people to um, physically get fit, having maybe an eating program, uh, but also encouraging exercising. And also stress and mental health, allowing people, if they need to take a mental health day, allow them to take a mental health day because it will pay back dividends years to come. And that's all underneath a healthy workplace, mm -hmm. both physical, mm -hmm. mental, as well as making sure people eat healthy. It's so true because, you know, if you have an orchestra that 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 is all in tune, it's because all the instrument instruments have been tuned and are at their yeah. peak performance. So if you if you're the instruments that do create our community at work, each individual, if they're not healthy and well, mentally, physically, psychologically, emotionally, um, if they Ha don't have if they have too much stress, for example, that's going to really make it toxic for for them Absolutely. to to live their best life yeah. and to yeah. perform yeah. their best. Yeah, even real quick, even with our own company, you know, I've been on this health journey. Three months ago, I was diagnosed with diabetes. I had mm -hmm. an A1C that was almost nine point zero. Went to the doctor today. I'm a uh, twenty six pounds lighter. And my blood work came back that my uh, A1C went from 8.99 down to 6.7. What did I do different? I took control over what I put in my mouth, getting some exercise, listening to Ann, eating healthier, listening to my wife, and I'm seeing the benefits of it. And so this is stuff that what we're sharing with you, we're practicing it. It's mm -hmm. not just do as I say. But we're also practicing what we're saying. 
Absolutely. And I'm going to bring in one of my favorite elements briefly, which is uh, making sure that that everyone involved in the company has access in some way to to nature. Um, nature yeah. is who we are. We are a part of nature. You know, a plant in the corner might look nice, but is it really letting people hear the birds sing? And whether you are in an industrial environment and you have to plan a, um, you know, a special event day and go somewhere great, or whether you actually can encourage a garden, what about, I know several people right now that are doing a trend of having um, a company vegetable garden where people can just go out, they visit, they prune, you know, they're on their cell phones sometimes in sort of a meeting where you're just listening. They're out there like clipping little pieces off, the, you know, the snipping the, the suckers off the tomato plants. Um, I mean, just getting in touch with nature instead of it, oh, it's that thing outside, but bringing that in uh, is one of the best, best uh, healthy cures and supports that we have for mental, yeah. physical, emotional wellness. Yeah. Imagine if we had a team meeting where we have a walking team meeting. Oh, the best. <laughs> oh, okay. You're speaking my language now. Well, we have to wrap up. Sadly, oh, we out of time. Yeah. This has been such a great one and actually a springboard for so much more to come. I know after we finish this series, we have one more left in how to cure disengagement and burnout at work. And I've had so many new ideas that we can chat about, Lyman, um, just from doing this series of few future content and other things we can flush out in more detail. Yes. So thank you all for being here today. Again, uh, please share this link with someone who could enjoy it, appreciate it, have fun with us, learn something about HR. Again, this is a show we've created just for you. And uh, do us a favor, please comment, like, subscribe, so we can keep this content coming to you. Uh, any final word, Lyman, before we go? This has been great. It's always a pleasure uh, to share these strategies, but these are things that we live by. And so um, thank you. You are a wonderful, wonderful host. I'm glad to be the co-pilot. <laughs> great team. Great teamwork. Yeah. The great teamwork in the making is an example. Well, we um sending our best wishes and warmest um cheer to all of you today and we look forward to having you join us next time uh, where we stream every tuesday at 11 a.m eastern that's 8 a.m pacific 3 p.m gmt shoot us your questions write us here on the platform you are listening or watching on or just go to our, our website and shoot us an email uh, we would love to hear from you we will see you all next time thank you so much bye-bye goodbye